Well, hello, everybody, and welcome from me, Ali, to All Saints Church, Isleworth, for our Sunday worship for Pentecost. Today is the day when we celebrate Jesus pouring out his Holy Spirit upon all those who believe in him to give us strength to walk with him each day and courage to share his love with others. A couple of verses from the psalm set today. Psalm 104, verses 33 to 34. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Make my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let's pray together as we continue with our worship. Heavenly Father, on this Pentecost Sunday, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit to all those who believe in your Son, Jesus. We pray that you will fill us today and always with your Spirit that we might have strength to love you with all our hearts and courage to share your love with others. And so we pray that you will fill us with joy and praise as we worship you now. For Jesus' sake, amen. And so we continue with our opening hymn.
We come now to the point in our service where we say sorry to God for failing to live as he wants us to live. Our time of confession. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows our every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and say sorry to him for ways that we fail him. Lord, we are sorry for things we have said, thought and done. We are sorry that our words, our thoughts and our actions have hurt you and others. Forgive us, we pray. Amen. The absolution. Together we receive God's forgiveness. May the God of love bring us back to himself. Forgive us our sins and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our notices for this week. First of all, on Sundays at 11 o'clock, we have a Zoom coffee meetup, and also on Wednesdays at 10 o'clock. You can find the Zoom link for those coffee times in the emails that come out on Saturdays and Monday or Tuesday. The food bank, which we support uh, throughout the year. The food bank is in need of food at the moment, as you can imagine, there's been much demand for it. And so All Souls Church are collecting offerings. If you want to drop anything off, please do so at All Souls Church office. It will definitely be open on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Fridays from 9 till 12. Do look at your email for a phone number that you can ring just to check that they really are open. And also in the email there are details of specific food and items that they need at this time. So we'd love to encourage you to support those in our community in need at this time. Birthdays. Each week we are remembering those who have birthdays either in the week that's just passed or the week to come. If you would like to be remembered for your birthday or if anybody in your family or friends have a birthday that you want to remember, then do drop me an email on ali.walton at allsaints-isleworth.org. Today, we're going to celebrate birthdays for Jeremy Level and Caitlin Arnold. And now giving. Although we're not able to meet together in church, we do still have financial needs. And so we're going to watch a short video now about how you can support the work of All, Sa All Saints financially. During this difficult time when our church buildings are closed, we're still a church. Meeting virtually for prayer services and fellowship. Loving our neighbours by offering practical support to the vulnerable and caring for our communities. The work of our church is reliant on people's generosity, a generosity that is a hallmark of a lived out faith and a testament to it. We give to our church in a variety of ways, but with the closure of all our buildings, we cannot receive all the gifts that we usually would. So we really need your help now. If you're able to give more at this time, Here's how you can help.
and now we share the peace of God with each other. If you are self-isolating and you're at home on your own, then maybe as we share peace today, you would like to give a friend or another family member a ring just to share peace with them. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk in the Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And so let's share peace now with those we love. If you have children in your household or you want some ideas of how you can pray around the theme of Pentecost for this week, then do look at the attachment that came out with your email or go to All Saints' Facebook page and you'll find some activities there put together for us by a group called Together at Home. We come now to our Bible reading for this week. It's Acts chapter 2. And I'm reading from the Lion's Storybook Bible for Children. The disciples were gathered in the upper room where Jesus had first appeared to them after he had risen from the dead. It was the day of Pentecost and Jerusalem was full of visitors who had come to celebrate the festival. The disciples were all sitting together and praying when suddenly the whole room began to shake. A mighty wind came roaring from the sky, thundering across the roof and surging through every window. The wild storm seized the disciples as if holding them, wrapping them in all its brightness and its power and a huge sheet of lightning flashed across the room, splitting into leaping tongues of fire, which settled on their heads like flames. Immediately they began to speak in other languages, words and phrases which they had never learned, but which the Holy Spirit poured into their hearts and minds came tumbling from their mouths. They ran from the room and into the streets. The crowds were astonished and fearful because they could hear these ordinary, uneducated men speaking in their own languages. There were visitors from Parthia, Persia, Mesopotamia, Cappadocia, Egypt, Libya, Crete, Rome, Jews from every part of the Roman Empire who were staying in Jerusalem for the festival. How can these Galileans speak in our languages? How can they preach about the wonderful works of God in a foreign tongue they have never learned? They asked each other. Some started to shake their heads at the sight of the twelve men, overflowing with joy and laughter. They're drunk, they said. Many people were shocked and bewildered at the extraordinary events. Peter stood up and addressed the vast crowd. Fellow Jews from Jerusalem and all over the world, Listen to me. None of these men is drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, what's happening is something wonderful, which God promised years ago through the prophet Joel. In the last days, wrote Joel, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will, will prophesy. Your young people will see visions. Your old people will dream dreams. 
There will be signs in heaven and earth in that great and glorious name, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Katerina is now going to lead us in some thoughts about Pentecost and what it means for us today. And then she's going to lead us in a time of prayer. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday, church. We have just sung happy birthday to Caitlin and Jeremy. Happy birthday to you. But we could also sing happy birthday to the entire worldwide church. Today, on the day of Pentecost, the church began. And on this day, the first Pentecost, 3,000 people came to faith. That's um, in response to the Holy Spirit being poured out. We heard in our reading that uh, the disciples were in Jerusalem and they were waiting. They were waiting for the Comforter, the Advocate that Jesus had promised when he went to heaven to be with the Father only 10 days ago on the day of Ascension. And what happened? The Holy Spirit came and um, the whole building shook. It was like a wind. And we often describe the Holy Spirit in those words of breath, wind, fire, even like an earthquake. The disciples started to speak in different um, languages. Languages that they did not know. A bit like all saints. Although there is a difference because the languages many of us speak at all saints um, are learned languages. And the languages the disciples spoke were languages given as a gift from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has so many gifts that he wants to give us. But who is he? Who is the Holy Spirit? Well, the Holy Spirit is a person and it is a person in the Godhead, in the Trinity, where the Father is a person, Jesus Christ, the Saviour of the world, is a person, and the Holy Spirit is a person. We read about the Holy Spirit throughout the Bible. And actually, did you know that the second verse of the Bible, which describes the creation of the world, mentions the Holy Spirit? It says this, the earth was formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. A wind from God swept over the face of the waters. A wind from God. That is um, a description of the Holy Spirit. And later in the Old Testament, we see that the Holy Spirit is given to particular people uh, for particular tasks at particular times. For example, Samson, in the book of Judges, he needed strength and the Holy Spirit gave, him, gave it to him. Isaiah and the other prophets, they needed the Holy Spirit so that they could prophesy. But then, between the Testaments, there is quite a long time when we don't hear anything about the activity of the Holy Spirit. Not until just before Jesus' birth, 
Then the Holy Spirit appears and is given to Elizabeth, Mary's cousin, and her husband, Zechariah. It's given to Mary herself, to John the Baptist. Remember, he said when he baptized Jesus that he was baptizing only in water, but that Jesus would baptize us in the Holy Spirit. And then also Simeon at the temple, he was a spirit-filled man. And when he saw Jesus as a baby, he said, I can leave this world now because I have seen the saviour of the world. He was a man full of the Holy Spirit. As Christians, we all have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has so many gifts that he wants to give to us. Love, joy, peace and unity are just some of them. When we read this passage here, we hear that um, Peter, when he was preaching, he was saying that now are the days which the prophet Joel prophesied would come in the last days when God would pour out his spirit. And I just love that word because it doesn't mean that it will just be one drop at a time. It's like a bucket from heaven of the Holy Spirit and all the comforting gifts that the Holy Spirit gives us. And that time is now. We live in the age of the Spirit. The age that so many in generations before Jesus was born could only dream of. The Holy Spirit is such a gift to the church and I think maybe especially in these times when we can't even meet together. The Holy Spirit lives in us and we can re-welcome the Holy Spirit to live in us and bubble us inside us, uh, bubble up inside us. So what is the reaction when the Holy Spirit comes? Well, we saw in the text that uh, for the disciples themselves, the reaction is joy and laughter and also the supernatural they could speak a language that they couldn't speak the day before and um, to the onlookers well the words used were um, astonished they were astonished they were shocked even and they were bewildered at the extraordinary events. I'd like to ask you, what's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? When have you sensed that comforting, loving wind flow through your entire body during Holy Communion, maybe? Maybe at a time when you have sensed deep peace? Maybe at a time when you have sensed deep unity with other Christians? Or at a time when you may have experienced healing? The Holy Spirit wants to refill us over and over again. And I think um, the text in Acts 2 that we are reading today, it speaks of facts and feelings. Facts in the sense that Peter is explaining what's happened in world history that this is something we have known about and 
the Holy Spirit will be given to all believers at some point, and he has the joy of preaching that day and saying, folks, it's today. The disciples are not drunk. And then the feeling part is the supernatural. And I think sometimes throughout history, um, and even today, maybe more so in the West, we're sometimes a bit scared that uh, something supernatural would happen that somehow we wouldn't be able to control. But that's not really for us to judge because it is God's gift. And the Holy Spirit will only come to us if he is welcome. The Holy Spirit will never force himself on us. And um, I'd like for us, um, as we move into a time of prayer now, to pray that very, very old prayer of the church. Come. Holy Spirit. The very first time I prayed this prayer myself, um, really sincerely at least, um, was on a Christmas service, a Christmas morning, when I was uh, 14 or 15 years old. So uh, we'd come to the service and as we were walking into the Christmas service, I was praying in my heart and I was saying, Father God, I'd really like to have a clear sense of the presence of your Holy Spirit this morning. And as we were there, as we were um, standing to sing a song, I felt a radiant light coming towards me and actually more than that, sort of embracing me all around. It was so warm. It was so comforting and it uh, drove me to tears. It was such a wonderful experience. And I sat down in the middle of the song that we were singing and my dad was next to me. He said, what's happening? What's going on with you? Um, and initially I felt a little bit offended by that. Although I didn't really care because what I was experiencing was like a little bit of heaven. Therefore, um, I'd like to encourage you now to find a place in your home where you can sit down, or you might want to stand, but I am going to move to my armchair. Um, and uh, I'm going to sit down there and lead us all in a prayer to welcome the Holy Spirit. I'd like for you to find a place in your home where you feel that you can really relax. And for me, this is my favorite armchair. And uh, I'd like for us to spend a little bit of time now asking the Holy Spirit to come and welcoming again the Holy Spirit into our lives. And the prayer we're going to pray is very simple. It's that old prayer of the church. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, with your peace. Come, Holy Spirit, I welcome you. Fill me afresh. And we're going to keep praying as we worship in the next song. And towards the end of it, we're going to pray the Lord's Prayer together.
the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. blessing and dismissal. May the spirit of truth lead you into all truth, give you grace to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and strengthen you to proclaim the word of works of God, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's work we send to the cross of Christ. All our hopes, we send them on the risen Christ. Amen. So thank you for joining us this Sunday. And 
do keep an eye on our Facebook page and our emails for further updates and other times of worship on our YouTube channel. May God bless you all and be with you this week. Bye for now.